A whole new world. The Agrabah no one sees. Watch your head, Aladdin said, making sure he ducked under a gigantic timber that slanted crazily from the center of the tower to the side. You live here? She didn't say it with disgust. She was surprised? Impressed? Aladdin had never thought he'd be bringing a girl back to his place who would actually like it. They reached the landing he had chosen to call home. His mother had tried to keep their little hut as welcoming and homey as possible. He honored her memory by trying to do the same now. There were a few threadbare old rugs. Some once-colored cloths he had draped over the uglier, broken bits of stonework and used as curtains. There were even a few pillows for sleeping on and a couple of urns for water and, well, just decoration. Yep, just me and Abu. We come and go as we please. That sounds wonderful, she said with a sigh. Well, it's not much, but it has a great view. With a dramatic flourish of his arm, he swept back the curtain, knowing how impressed she would be. Directly in front of them was the palace, a mile away, but looming so large it seems like you could reach out and touch it. At least a dozen of its golden onion-shaped domes were visible, glowing like suns. The giant formal gates and portcullis glowed luck lucky royal blue, like the sky. The road seemed to lead right from Aladdin's tower through the city to the palace, pushing pesky houses and buildings to either side. Nobody obstructed the road. It had to be kept clear for caravans and deliveries and parades and the horses, litters, and wagons of visiting royalty. There had been a lot of that lately. What with the princess having to marry soon. The palace looks pretty amazing, huh? Aladdin sighed. Oh, it's wonderful, the girl said. But she didn't walk over to look with him. Instead, she collapsed on the steps that led up to the sleeping pad, wearily resting her head on her hands. I wonder what it'd be like to live there. Or in any mansion. I'm not picky, Aladdin mused, trying to conceal his disappointment at her reaction. Well, maybe at least he could get her to finally open up about where she came from. All those servants and valets. Oh, sure, people to tell you where to go and how to dress, the girl said, rolling her eyes. It's better than here, where you're always scraping for food and ducking regards, he pointed out. You just said Abu came and go you and Abu came and go as you please. If you were born into a royal family, you'd have to do whatever they told you to do, whatever you're expected to do, and you can't go anywhere. Yeah, well you can't go anywhere socially when you're a street rat. Our upward no mobility is strictly limited. Even if I wanted honest work, no one would want to hire me for any job. Not even for a servant at an estate, and there's no place else to go. Once you're born in the quarter of the street rats, you're... Trapped? Jasmine finished. Aladdin looked up at her, surprised. It was like she actually understood. Like she felt the same way. He went over and sat down next to her. She didn't move to give him more room. Their legs touched. He took a couple of apples out of his sash, handing one to her and the other to Abu. Abu awarded him, rewarded him with happy ruckus, chittering, and then did exactly as Aladdin had hoped. He scampered up into the roof of the tower to enjoy the whole thing by himself. The girl pulled a tiny silver dagger out of her clothes and nearly cut her apple into two halves, hitting one to him. He grinned at her and toasted her with his half. So, where are you from, anyway? He finally dared to ask. Why does it matter? She growled. I ran away and I'm not going back. Really? How come? What could be so awful if you never want to see your mother or father again, or sister or whatever? The girl seemed to soften a little at that. I would love a sister, or a brother, and my mother died when I was very young. Aladdin felt something in his heart break a little. What a terrible thing to have in common with a beautiful girl. And my father is forcing me to get married. Her eyes grew hard again. How would you like it if someone told you what you have no choice about who you're going to spend the rest of your life with? She balled her fist in anger. Aladdin found himself stepping back. He could be 30 years older than me, but rich. She snapped at Aladdin, as if it was his idea. He pulled back in genuine fear. He could be dumb, but rich. He could be arrogant. He could treat me like just another possession. I mean, that's how my father is treating me, handing me over like that. He could be cruel. He could be... She stopped herself from saying whatever was next, looking at Aladdin with a little embarrassment, like it was something too horrible to mention out loud. He could stuff me full of babies, one every year. Not that there's anything wrong with babies, like one or two, eventually. All I know is that I haven't 
been reached 20 years yet, and my father has decided that my life, with a little I have to choose of it, is over. Aladdin gulped. For some reason, the little gold bar appeared in his head. She wasn't bad at all, but if he was told he had to marry her, and spend the rest of his life with her? He also thought about Morgiana. She had a tiny dagger hidden in her too, but it wasn't silver, and it wasn't for fruit. If anyone had tried to suggest her marrying anyone against her will, well, it would go badly for anyone involved. She would never let that happen. That's awful, he said with feeling. I... I'm sorry, I... Just then, Abu leapt down from the ceiling. Aladdin watched with concern as the little monkey made a beeline for the girl's half of the apple. Aladdin grabbed the little monkey out of the air and put him on his shoulder, whispering a, a rimpoid. What's wrong? What was he doing? The girl asked. She began to relax again at Abu's antics. Nothing, Aladdin said, stroking the little monkey's back. The girl the, leaned over and tickled Abu's chin. Abu was just, uh, just outraged at what a terrible thing your dad is doing to you. Oh, really? The girl asked with a knowing smile. She pursed her lips in a, a, in a mew of disbelief. Aladdin felt his chest go weak and his brain go stupid. Oh, yeah, he was just saying how outraged he was that men still control the lives of young women even in this modern, enlightened age, Aladdin said. He was petting Abu, but looking at the girl. He wasn't sure what he was saying, really. He would say anything, keep talking forever if it kept her looking at him like that. Interesting. And does Abu have anything else to say? She asked, leaning closer. Cinnamon. Her breath smelled of cinnamon. He could even smell her skin at that distance. Though he wasn't one normally prone to poetry, he could only think of a fresh desert breeze that carried a whisper of cypress and sandalwood. He wishes there was something he could do to help. That at least was honest. He wasn't exactly sure how kissing would help her. He just knew it was going to happen or he was going to die. Tell him I just might take him up on that, the girl said, closing her eyes and tilting her head. Len put his arms around her back and prepared for the best thing that could ever happen to him. Which, of course, when when the guards showed up. Razul wasn't even with them. His second-in-command led the attack, and how a man even larger than Razul with five large guards had managed to sneak up the stairway without Aladdin's hearing was a mystery he would have to solve another day. A better question, he realized instantly, was how they had known where he was. "'Finally, I found you,' Razul second shouted. "'And again, really?' Aladdin said, leaping up. "'All this for one loaf of bread?' "'How did you find me?' the girl shouted at the same time. The two turned to look at each other. "'They're after you?' he asked. "'What about bread?' she asked. Razul's second-in-command wasn't the sort of person who would let confusion interrupt his orders. "'You cannot escape. Come now, lest it be worse for you.' Aladdin leapt up on the edge of the narrow stone balustrade and separated his sleeping nook from the city below. He held his hand out to the girl. "'Do you trust me?' he asked. The girl looked confused for a moment. E yes she said uncertainly. That was enough for Aladdin. Then jump! He grabbed her too slow-moving hand and yanked her up next to him, then he leapt into the air, pulling her along. She did scream. Who would blame her? They were plummeting from rosy twilight into deep midnight as they shot several down stories down through a crack in the ceiling of a building below them. Their speed was broken by two very carefully tied tarps that Aladdin had installed in case of just such an emergency. Their landing, while jarring and painful, was made softer in the piles of sand that had been gathered there by centuries of neglect and wind. Aladdin leapt up immediately, and the girl's hand still in his. She was right by his side, also too smart to take a moment to recover, but the door was suddenly filled by an unfortunately familiar silhouette. He appeared too quickly for them to change direction. Aladdin and the girl slammed into Razul's chest. We just keep running into each other, don't we, straight rat? He said with a tired irony. He grabbed Aladdin by his vest, shoving him off to the second squad of guards behind him. Aladdin cursed. He should have realized something was up when the captain of the guard wasn't in the tower with the rest. Razul had already re reconned his hideout and planted himself by the escape route. Irritatingly intelligent. It's the dungeon, dungeon for you this time, boy. No escape. The girl, somewhat incredibly began to attack the giant captain. Aladdin and the guards watched with some similar surprise as she hit Razul uselessly in the chest again and again with her small fists. Let him go, she shouted. 
Well, look at that, Razul said, tossing her aside as easily as he had the monkey. A street mouse. Aladdin felt his blood boil as the girl tumbled to the floor. The guards began to laugh. Even Razul chuckled as he turned to go. Unhand him. The girl stood up and swept off her robe. By order of the royal princess. Razul stopped chuckling and the guards gasped. Aladdin felt his stomach flip. That girl. The girl he had spent his afternoon with. The girl who had left off the sides of buildings and pole vaulted off others. Who had charmed Abu and shared an apple with him. Was not such some rich girl off for a jaunt or running away from home. She was a princess. The royal princess. Jasmine. Her eyes were black and hard. Her back was straight. Her arms hung gracefully at her sides as if she had too much power even to need to put them on her hips or cross them in anger. Her diadem sparkled. The princess, Aladdin said faintly. It was said that Jasmine was beautiful. It was said she was quick-witted. Both of these were without question true. It was also said that she was a witch with, t with a tiger for a familiar. It was said she tore her suitors to shreds. Verbally and via via the tiger, occasionally literally. Princess Jasmine, Razul said immediately, lowering his eyes and bowing. What are you doing outside the palace? And with this street rat? That is none of your concern, Jasmine said. She put her hands on her hips and marched right up into the captain's face, as if he was no more to her than an irritating camel. Do as I command. Release him. I would, princess, Razul said. He seemed generally regretful. He flicked a look back at Aladdin. Maybe he thought it was all a bit too much for a loaf of bread as well. Except my orders came from Jafar. You'll have to take it up with him. Aladdin's heart froze. Why would the Grand Vizier care about Aladdin? Jafar? Princess Jasmine was apparently thinking the same thing, but she managed to control her surprise, turning the question into a sneer of disgust. The last thing Aladdin saw before the guards hauled him off was her concerned eyes hardening. Believe me. I will be paying you a visit.